And today's You Notice episode is brought to you by Bevel. And the good folks over at Bevel for the holiday season gave you a chance to save some money for you or your loved ones. Head on over to getbevel.com forward slash Pete and get yourself some of that Bevel product, that trimmer, that shaver, the lotion. You see that lotion that it comes with? I love that motion that lotion. Lavin. And you're going to get the first month for free. Get free be- 99. Getbevel.com forward slash Pete. It's the holiday season. Like I said, whatever season you're in, if it's Hanukkah, if it's Christmas, if it's Kwanzaa. That's right. So before you take those back shots, shave your back. Go to getbevel.com forward slash Pete. Now let's get to the show. Cheer. Hey. Happy holidays, Internet. Cheer. Happy holidays. Hi, kids. Do you like violence? Want to see me stick nine-inch nails through each one of my eyelids? Yeah. Want to copy me? Do exactly what I did. Try, sit, and get fucked up. Worse than my life is. My brain's dead weight. I'm trying to get my head straight, but I can't figure out which Spice Girl I want to impregnate. Pastor P said, Miss Lissa, you a base head. Uh-uh, so why is your face red? Man, you with... Well, since age 12, I felt like I was someone else because I hung my original self from the top bunk with a belt. Got pissed off and ripped Pamela Lee's lips off. <laughs> kissed him and said, I ain't no silicone was supposed to be this soft I smoke a fat pound of grass and fall on my ass faster than the fat bitch that sat down too fast come here thotty listen wait a minute that's his girl dog I don't give a fuck Pete pick me to piss the world dog hi my name is what my name is who my name is Vicky Vicky Miss Lisa hi this is the what you know the who this is the Vicky Vicky premium P show hey Come on, everybody, get set, let's go. It's the next episode. It's the Premium Pete Show. News, interviews, all of the info. Listen up, it's the Premium Pete Show. If you want to scoop in the low, down low, listen to the show, cause Milk said so. Fuck what you heard, better act like you know. Miss Lissa knows, it's the Premium Pete Show. You are a sick fucking girl. My English teacher wanted to fuck me in junior high. She, Thanks, she, she did? <laughs> I was getting a little open. Shout out to my white rappers. No, no, no. Listen, that was dope. I really uh, enjoy. You are a sick person, but I enjoy sick people. <laughs> Wait, why I'm sick? No, because I, well, first time I ever heard Eminem sing like that, I never, could, I never could picture what he is today. Honestly, right? Never. Like I never thought that. Like I thought it was a joke. So the crazy shit is when I first heard that song, I thought Eminem was like a weird white boy. I mean, a weird black guy, like kind of like a Kid Cudi. Like I, I envision him looking kind of like that. And then when I saw he was white, I was like, get the wool out of here. Yeah, no, nah, you know, Emma's came a long way, man. You know, I think that uh, it's funny, too, because it's like, I guess you could really see who really cares about the culture, who's about the culture. Right. Over longevity. You know, I thought, I'd be honest, but like I said, the first time I heard it, I thought it was some like, you know, some funny white kid trying to like just. Right, be down. Be down. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I didn't understand what my name is. My name, <laughs> like, I, I was like, okay, like, I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't, it wasn't to hip hop that. I was growing up on. Right. But I think M grew on a lot of people and, and he spit so lyrically where you're like, oh shit, homeboy, nice. I mean, there's a lot of still like, uh, you know, different opinions. Some people say he's the best rapper right now and then there's some that say that he's overrated. Like even Jay-Z said that Eminem was overrated. Well, everybody has, you know, I mean, M, M has found his way to a lot of people's top fives. Yeah. And, and, and some not, you know, uh, but everybody's top five is different, you know. What's your top five? We never, I, never I mean, well, that. If I say what my top five is now, no, which I will, mad at you. no, no, no. Oh. I, it will, it will change maybe next year, depending on how I feel. But, uh, obviously Big J. Okay. You know, and, 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 uh, you know, I'll throw M in there, but it's gotta be, uh, uh, Rakim, um, and LL and, you now know, you got five. that's it. Andre 3000. That's six. Yeah, listen. <laughs> it's hard. To, it's hard. To, it's hard to pick. You yeah. Know. I mean, there's so many. I mean, you could, like, I really fuck with Jada Kiss. And, and fabulous, I feel like they're not mm-hmm. on a lo- enough people's top fives. Yeah, but that, um, you don't have to worry who's top five. Worry about if it's on your top five. They on mine, y'all on mine. If, and if y'all ready to come through on the couch, you know Pete gonna set that up. I know those are your friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who uh, Jada? Yeah, more styles, more styles. But Jada's like Jada is so like one thing I love about Jada is like even his lyrics. I was telling this to Styles P. I was like, yo, he says things where I'm like, yo, how the fuck did he know that? Even like jail stuff, like he'll be like spinning out certain jail lyrics or certain things that only certain people know. I'm like, who the fuck does he know in there? But you know, D block. Yeah, you know, you know it's, SP the ghost. Yeah, I mean, somebody comes home and tells, you know, it's, it's a circle, you know, it's a circle of people. And, you know, Jade is definitely dope, man. I mean, he, he considers himself top five. He let alive. that be known. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's he right. lets that be known. You know, some people, it's funny because I feel like 
you need to tell people what you are. You know, I remember someone telling me a long time ago, they were like, yo, if you feel like you're dope or you're this or you're the king of this shit, and whatever you do, just say. Right? Tell people that. And I was like, why, why would you do that? He said, because people aren't going to believe what that you're saying unless you're you saying it. it. Yeah. You know, and, and even if it's not, you know, like, like I guess like, that's why I always used to laugh at, like, people used to get mad at Kanye and say he was super, super cocky back in the day. Like, I remember he was on 106 in Park one time with GLC. And I think it may have been Roxy and Terrence could be the, that was on there at the time. And they were like, yo, uh, why do people, you know, do you think you're the best rapper or people feel like, you know, and he's like, yeah, I'm the greatest. And then they asked him like, you know, people think you're cocky or something. And he was like, well, what am I supposed to say? Like, think about it. What right. am I supposed to say? Um, I'm all right. I'm okay. I mean, I'm mediocre. Like people like w- would step on you if you right. said that. That's kind of corny for... Anyway, listen, shout out to Kanye, man. Hopefully, uh, you know, he's okay. I know that, um. Kanye is a Kardashian. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. We not gonna his act stock like, going up. His listen, stock going exactly. Up. Him and his fake fucking, I'm not saying it's fake, but it's fake. Like, uh, it's a little bit just for the media hype. I don't know. Well, you I, know, they I, I say, they like say, you know, and what happens if he is going through things? If he, you know, what happens if he's having a mel- uh, mental breakdown? And if he is, you know, we must, Shout out every, anybody who goes through things like that, and 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 really, you know, we try to show yeah, love to everybody, should, of course, because know. you never know what someone else is going through. That's a fact. And just because he's famous, Kanye kind of is that kid that always throws a fucking tantrum, though. Like that's the thing. Like he always throws a tantrum when he don't get his way. Always like so outspoken, so extra that it's like now it's kind of like. Is it just another publicity stunt? Like, I don't know. Like, I definitely don't want him to, you know, not get well. Get well, Kanye. We all praying for you. But in the same breath, like, everything doesn't, doesn't need to be so open to the public. Like, why you don't just suffer in silence? Not suffer in silence. Just, like, why don't you just, just go take care of you know, what you need to take care of? All these outbursts and all this extraness. I just feel like it's to draw more attention to Kanye. Yeah. And, you know, shouts to Kanye. Hopefully. Like we don't even know if Kim really got robbed, B. Like, I feel like all of that was fake. Yeah, but the insurance company don't know that. That's what I'm saying. Hey, hey listen, you know, uh, rich people doing rich things, man. What the fuck do we know about that yeah. shit? But what I will say is I had an amazing Thanksgiving. Different. You know, I went to the it's restaurant. The so it was a, a little bit different. You know, it wasn't like, you, you know, the family, like, you know, um... Like you, you want some more of this stuffing? You know, like, like it was. <laughs> you ain't mo- get no leftovers either, right? No, nah, but you know what happened? We had um, ordered a couple of things, not only from the restaurant, from another place. So we had pickings, you know, like things to pick on when we came home. Oh, okay. so you know, we had pies and stuff. It wasn't a lot of us. It was just me, my, you know, my mother and my lady, and 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 Tristan. That's it. You know, um, my daughter stayed with her mother, so you know, sharing different holidays and stuff like that. It's t- it's a tough thing. Um, but you know that's part of being separated. So you know. yeah, I had that too. Uh, my daughter went with her dad. She goes with him every Thanksgiving. So I just did some house hopping. I went to see my dad, my grandmother, my uncle. He just had surgery on his kidney. Really? Shout out to him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We like, send him prayers. We send him, him prayers. Some prayers. And just like had some fun family time. But I had a lot of great food. I did not take any leftovers. I'm trying to like really be diligent in this lifestyle change. So I did have my Thanksgiving moment, but I left it at that. And I just, you know, enjoyed and kept it moving. I didn't get sweet potato pie though. Really? No, that made me sad. Yeah, I had some pumpkin pie yeah, and some I mean, apple pie. I really Listen, that. I was in a fucking food coma. Who the fuck am I lying? Yo, at one point in time I came home, I remember I was on the couch. I, I was fucked the fuck up, man. I mean, I was, I was, I had the itis for real, though. I had no, the itis. Real. I, I was listen. If you're not in a food coma for Thanksgiving, then I don't know what you're doing. I hate yourself. that feeling, though. I made it a, I made a point not to be in that feeling. Like I hate when I'm too stuffed and I just can't move. And then they're, they're, now you unzipping in the pants, looking like pregnant. Like I don't want all of that. So I, I did. Like I said, I ate, but. I didn't get the food coma. I was very proud of well, myself. Well, well, listen, internet. We hope you you had a great Thanksgiving. Yes, we do. And oh, oh, shout out to my Latinos. Yo, if you got that coquito hookup, yo, hit us right now at the Premium P Show at Miss Lisa. I need coquito and pasteles. Listen, coquito get you people pray. You'll, you'll be yo, pregnant you'll be- by fucking January. You fucking with that shit. <laughs> but anyway, listen. Uh, last episode with Cipher Sounds was, was a great episode. Most definitely. Uh, it dropped during the holidays. We dropped it a day early. I thought it was dope that we could do that for the internet. That really 
or just for like maybe on a road trip or pre Thanksgiving, you know, um, holidays. And it was dope, man. I, I love, I love Sci Fi. Shout out to Sci Fi. I love his, uh, story. And, you know, I, you know, when you do an episode, even some of them are like two hours and they're great. And, you know, I really enjoyed them. And I know the internet, you enjoy them too. But sometimes I feel like you even forget to say some things. Like one thing I really uh, wanted to tell Sci and, uh, I've told him before, but I'll say it again to him is I'm proud of him. That kid never gave up, man. You know, even like, you know, not getting things he wanted, being loyal, you know, maybe he could have felt entitled. And I don't know. I think the Cypher, so- Cypher Sound story is a great story. And, yeah. and, you know, it was dope that he came and shared his journey. Um, I'm looking forward to this episode that we're going to have. But, but in the meantime, I do want to give a shout out to, um, Listen, it's that time again where, where I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you giving me a shout out? Yes, finally. Some no, no, acknowledgement. You're getting, you're, listen, dude. Yes, you, start now. Shout out. Give me my motherfucking sh- get it. First of all, I want to give a shout out to all the listeners worldwide. You said when listeners I say, or Lissa? Listeners, not Damn. listeners. Stop, right. stop, stop being selfish. Right. Listeners worldwide, okay? United States, okay, obviously. Okay. obviously. Home, the home shout team. out to the United States. We here. United Kingdom. Uh oh. Okay, good day. Across the water. Canada. I don't know how to do they speak. Okay. Germany. Good Morgan. Australia. Sweden. Netherlands. South Africa. France. New Zealand. Jamaica. Hey, come over here to the premium show. Oh, okay. Belgium. Waffles. Nigeria. Switzerland. Denmark. Spain. Japan. I got hoes. Norway, in Mexico, Kenya, Finland. Coast. Anyway, listen. Area codes. Listen, that is that, that, that. Listen, that I wanted to shout out some of the country. Yeah. That are fucking with the premium pizza. And that, like, I went and looked at some of the stats and I was like, yo, these are where, where we have listeners all over. Like, those were just some of the listeners in some of the countries I was talking about. Now let's get to, you know what? Even let's get to some of the cities. Go a little deeper. Let's get to some of the cities. Get a little deeper. New York, New York. Top. Hey. Of course it's top. Hello. You know what the top listeners are in? New York. Brooklyn. That's, come on. They love us. They love us. New York is, is next. Then you got the Bronx. Then you got Atlanta, Georgia, Philadelphia, Chicago, Houston, Texas, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, California, Baltimore, Maryland, Toronto, Canada, San Francisco, California, Charlotte, Miami, Detroit, Boston, Orlando, Dallas, Texas, Newark, New Jersey. Shout out to the airports out there, too. And Richmond, VA. Listen, let me tell you something. I would be here forever if I keep on going over. But what I want to say is this. At Premium P Show, at Premium P, at Miss Listen Knows. Check in. Let us know where you, like, if you're listening right now, tweet us. Let us know where you're from. Let us know what country you're from, what city you're from. And I want to know, I want to know, I want to shout you out, man. And I really appreciate everybody on the check in, man. Me too. You know, just to, just to know Kenya. Like, who the fuck is listening to Kenya right now? Yo, shout out to Kenya and all the black people that listen to us, you know. How you know there's not a white person over there? Because I feel it. I feel my you people. You don't think it's an Italian over there? <laughs> yes what's he doing <laughs> I do I feel like it's a blended Italian over and there. you know what I do want to say this internet as we start to wrap up the end of the year okay there will be the last episode of the year will be the best episodes of the premium P show so far this year we started this year and we're going to do certain clips what I want the internet to do is email us at the premium P show at gmail.com let us know some of your favorite episodes this year if you want to tweet us you don't have to email. Maybe email is too much. For those people who don't have the patience, tweet us. But make sure you let us know what the fuck you're talking about. Right. And tell us your favorite episodes this year. We're going to put, what we're going to do is the last episode of the year, me and Miss Lissa are going to narrate, and we're going to put together probably like 10 episodes. And we're going to put like the best parts, in the, or the best part. Those are the episodes that really like stuck out to you. You know, I think there's about 34 right now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what episodes like, Pick a couple, the ones that or really. Or any moments that you really like that stuck out, or maybe you learned something really great from Cipher Sounds, or maybe you have a quote from Angela Yee that stuck out to you. Like, just let us know what you connected with, so that we could, you know, acknowledge that for the end of the year. Yeah, because we're, we're gonna pick um, the end of the year episodes, um, where where like I said, those end of, that end of the year episode will have different episodes clips in there so you know i want the people to let us know like what were the top episodes so you know and you, if you want to go as far as letting us know your top moments from the top episodes feel free to do that also 
the premium Pete show at gmail.com. Again, email us at the premium Pete show at gmail.com. Listen, listen, I'm excited for this episode. Um, when we bring our guests back on, when we come back from the break, when you get a chance to go, you know, powder your nose and lip a little bit. I don't do you don't drugs. Do that? No, <laughs> I'm a, I was actually talking about. Oh, that, you Makeup. know, you was in jail. I thought that was like jail talk. I'm no, sorry. But why would sorry. jail have powder like that? We don't have drugs. Yeah, y'all like got that. everything. Y'all got cookbook. Listen, <laughs> nah, that's prodigy. There's things happening man. in jail. Y'all got arts and crafts. That's prodigy. Co- culinary arts. That's prodigy. Art of war. That's prodigy. He has that on the outside. He has that on the outside. But anyway, listen, internets. What I want you to do for me is this: I want you to make sure you subscribe to iTunes. Make sure you follow us on SoundCloud. Make sure you check out the YouTube page. We're on Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, all that, okay? If, if you're not be up on the YouTube, we got super behind the scenes, clips of all different shows, etc. Make sure you follow us or just connect with us on all these platforms, okay? If you don't know what I said, then you could just um, go Rewind to... Rewind it back. What? So they don't know what you said. They can rewind it back. Yeah, people don't want to rewind on, it back. Come on, it's a podcast. Y'all got to do some stuff. If y'all ain't hear what he said, stay strong. Now, go to all the platforms. Check your apps. If it has podcasts on it, we on there. And just yeah, show no, some what, fucking what, what, love. What, what, you ain't got to hold in your hand. Whatever people... Uh, like say if they're doing Android and they like get it on Google Play, we there. We there. So 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 fuck with it. But you know what, Internet? Since I'm asking for you a favor, I want I want you to do me another favor. <laughs> okay, just because I'm asking you for one doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop right there. Netflix suggestions. I want to know for the holidays for December. December's upon us. Okay, I want to know what y'all fucking with. At Miss Listen knows. At Premium P. At Premium P Show. Let me know what we should be fucking with, what should we should be binge watching, what, she, what we should be connected with on Netflix. Give us, give us, give us those shows. I yeah. want to know. I know something you should have been watching is the the finale just passed. Insecure. Issa yeah, yo, Rae, I see you're not so watching many, that with your, see, with your wife. I see. Here? I see so many people on that man. Oh, this last episode was the truth. Yo, that show was only like thirty minutes long. And that's How are people why people dissecting you know it's that shit it's to like, the bone. Man. Nah, that shit is real. That shit is like Vine, my nigga, because it's so good. Seven minutes, you like, damn. How did they put all that greatness in thirty minutes? Like, I was there. Like, oh my goodness, I need more. Yeah, I'll stop fucking with it, but I need to know more, man. It's only it's only eight episodes, and they only thirty minutes each. So it's not that's like four episodes of power. Like, you gotta just just get it. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's some, one thing I love about Twitter is I get all my suggestions from the people that I, I, I listen to the people like if they give me a suggestion, I'll, I'll go and if it's garbage, I won't ever take their advice again. Do you go back and let them know that you tried, tried it out and it was garbage? No, I don't answer them. I have, oh, to, I have okay. to put them on mute. When, you know, yeah. once you give me some bad information, you got to go on fucking mute. You know, <laughs> that'd be dope. Like, honestly, I'll be honest with you. That'd be dope if they did that in real life. I muted a couple of people in, in real life. I walk right by them like they muted. What do you think about mar- if marriage in real life was like a, a, a lease? Like you, you gotta know, renew it. Well, you have an option to buy. Yeah. Or you have an option to return it in. Like they should three, make it like that. Like, yeah, like say me and you like got married. IPhone. Right. Say me and you got married. Right. And we did the thirty nine months. Right. <laughs> a lot of wear and tear. You know, and you know, and after thirty nine months, maybe we don't. We, you know, may, we want to return it. They should actually do, they should do that. That's kind of smart. A marriage sh- or a relationship should be like a lease. But mad people will be returning their bitches. Like, you know what? She don't clean enough. Uh, return your man. Like, he's cracking. Like, I don't want this anymore. I'm, it's over. Well, or you could just, mad people would do or that. Or you could just had, drove the car and, the lease is up. It's time for you to get a new one. Or mad dudes would just do it just so they could get the the, the shmammies. Like, no, but keep in mind. Like, keep, oh, I'm saving it for marriage. You gonna marry you then return you on the on the thirty ninth month? Keep in mind, a relationship is like that for a reason. Okay, and reason why I say that it should be like a lease is because again, I want I want to explain to you. If somebody is in a relationship for like thirty nine months, just like a car lease, right? After it ends, they return it. Mm-hmm. Or they have the option to buy. Right. So if they have the option to buy, that means that they could turn around and get involved and say, like, look, this is what I want. I want this. Right? So that would technically mean they were married. So then that, that's we already have that. The lease is the engagement with the option to buy, which would be the, be the marriage. Yeah. 
So, so um, that's why. Hey, we trying to say that after you marry the bitch, you should have the option to say, "Wait a minute," and I'm not talking about like a norman, like a little bit longer. See if it really like makes sense, and then if it don't, then you can just cut it off. Yeah, I mean that's, um, you that's s- what they did. You sound do. like uh, Lorraine Bobbitt the way you just said he that. Cut it off. I, I won't. I won't want to stay with you. But I really think that that I always thought about that like that. If you had any type of um, specifications like that, maybe people would pay attention more. Like, you know, kind of like, you know, all right, we did this thing for 39 months. What's it looking like? Oh, you know. I don't know. I mean, relationships in this new day and age are just. Oh, you don't think relationships weird. are worth it anymore? I don't, I don't know if people, I think they are worth it, but I don't think people understand that they're worth it anymore. Like the younger generation, they kind of caught up in this, like it's all quick and it's all sitting on sink, swipe to the left, like not really getting to know somebody. Like, so, I mean, it's definitely worth the while, but a lot of people don't feel like putting in the time is just that easy to move on to somebody else. Like you don't have to see if it's going to work. It's like, you know what? New bitch over here. She just fixed her body. I'm about to go that way. I don't have to what deal is with too, you. Well, first of all, no we, we spoke about this so many times before. There's so many options. So when you say like new bitch over here, new body, of course, uh, there's so many options. Like say, if, again, I'm going to use this as an example. You're my girl. Me and you get into an argument, mm-hmm. right? It's nothing for you. A guy will take, another guy will take you in a second. Nobody, there's so many options out there. You, you think about it, right? I get into an argument with you, right? So, 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 so we get into an argument and all of a sudden you go out and maybe you change your Facebook static. You motherfuckers are like on you. Like that's it. Like, oh that's shit. A fact. No, but think about it. Like that's how it's, it's easy to lose your girl and it's easy to lose your guy these days. So how do you, how do you, how do you keep on to them? You just gotta, I feel like y'all gotta be very honest with each other. You and you be- gotta keep this nigga on his toes. Like you gotta change your wig, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a new chick. You want somebody new? Watch this. Ara. Magic. Oh, well, see, yeah, that's like, that's girl. that role playing shit. Yeah, see, you gotta role- keep it spicy. That's what you have to do. Yeah, but when they get the new weeds, then I feel like I'm fucking somebody new, man. You okay, know I mean? so you welcome. That shit does feel good, but it don't feel the way it's still, it's not, it's not new. It's, it's new. It's new. But it's not, well, no, no, it's not new because the, the box is still the same, you know? She gonna have to try something new. Do she some can't change moves. her box, you know? She gonna have to do some I look at it, I'm like, oh, shit, this look like a new way. Take a vinegar bath. Shave it a little differently, or if you shave it normally, don't shave it this time. Let it get a little fresh. Oh, first. shit. Be a little, keep it freaky. Hey, listen, internet, whatever you do, if you're with somebody, you know, love each other, be honest with each other, or don't. But I'll be honest with you, I don't got no time to be in a relationship where we can't be honest with each other. People yeah. be playing games all day long. Like, I'm, like my daughter, she's, she, she, she's with this guy, and, and, and one day they're broken up, one day they're together. I'm like, yo, I don't know how you do it. What if he listens to the show? What you? He might. What, what, what is he gonna do? He might, your father was talking about us on the show. No, I just, I just, I tell her all the time. You don't like him. The either? headache. No, I like him. He's cool. Okay. But the headache to go through. Why go through all that headache? That's a fact. To play a game. Just be honest. Like yo, maybe when you get older, listen, internet. Right now, I don't ever judge. You know, I love everybody. But I'll tell you one thing. You could, you could, uh, you you could look at it this way. You could really enjoy yourself. Right. Right. With somebody. Or you could play games. But when you get older, you take the time to really enjoy somebody. You know? Get somebody to go out to eat with. Somebody to grow with. Somebody to invest in. You know? That's what matters. And somebody to get a Christmas gift for. The holidays are coming, guys. Don't be funny. How long do you think you have to wait before you have to buy a gift for a guy or a girl? Like if you're talking to them. After a Um, month? Well, I I think guys sometimes are a little... They scared. They're scared to get into uh, some relationships around November or October because they're like, "Shit, man, I got in." It's like almost like January. Like get into a relationship. Next thing you know, it's Valentine's Day. Right. So that's tough. But I mean, to me, it's like, you know, you get what you could afford. You be sweet with it. You know, like I don't know. People think like they gotta buy red bottoms or something. I, again, I, I I have friends that do this. I like, meaning like buy their girls or their significant others things that they really can't afford that don't make no sense to me so what should you get what's a, what's a good be sweet man. Or cook, gift? cook them a meal be sweet you know bitches Fucking, don't always want no meal under the tree don't think get like, the fuck out of here then you can't just cook on a regular day like i gotta wait till christmas to get a no, meal no, i'm saying i'm saying you could be you could go well, you could go suave about it all right light some candles Get the oven running. <laughs> right, right, Not right. Cook some stuff. Do some flowers. Some, yeah, some, some rose petals. Like you could be. Like hit. I, I guess what I'm saying is, everyone's doing the same. It don't take nothing for a motherfucker to go out and buy someone red bottoms. Wow, 
You spend money. That shit is easy. Do something different. A lot of guys, that's why I always say real men cook. Because a lot of guys think like, maybe a woman should cook. I don't know. Both of y'all cook. Maybe you cook one day. But you got to do it different. That's what I'm saying. You got to give something that, that that's going to last. If you give something that's only going to materialistic stay, what could you expect? That's true. It's about the memories. You could take her ice skating. That's sweet. Or you sweet. could take her on take vacation. Her ice skating. That's dope. Word. Take me on vacation. Vacation. I'm trying to go vacation. I'm trying to go vacation. <laughs> Let me know where you want to go. We could even go, you know, to Ireland. Or if you kind of broke, I'm going to meet you at, you know, uh, New Jersey. What's that? Um, Land City. Land City? City. Nah, Land City got a lot of scurves in there. You could have a little moment in Land City. I, or, you, or, guys, you could take her to, like, a sip and paint. That would be nice little experiences. What the you fuck know? is a sip and paint? It's, it's, it don't sound kind of self to sip wine or whatever and you, you paint and you paint something nice Sound like some bob ross learn shit. how to paint or you could do something freaky like you could do some body paint Rah, take her to the hotel room i'm about to start it up room room start take her to the hotel room put on some jeezy or whatever you like whatever your romantic music is and just do like body painting thing like smooth it out and just it's like ghosts but like elevated i'm like pottery Yo, you hang out with too many people who do drugs. No, anyway, what? internet. This it's, is not drug. This is drug free. This is for drug free people. Internet. It's it's that time. We're gonna take a break, and we're gonna come back with a friend of ours. That's right. A, fr- uh, 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 a two time Super Bowl champion. Uh, oh, he got them rings. Yeah, he got them rings. I don't he know put if he a brought ring them. on it. I don't know if he brought them. I don't know if he, he brought. Got, them. I want to try one. Don't on. you try to put them on. We'll see. We'll see. I'm trying to put a ring on it. I mean, dude is a bunch of things, but most importantly. Um, smart, um, definitely in- smart. inspiring, uh, entrepreneur, and ab- and you know we always like to leave people with gems. Like we don't just do this shit so you can listen to us talk. We want you to learn, be inspired. That's a fact. Uh, not only to get your own podcast, maybe get your own business. Maybe learn what it was like for some. Maybe people listening who are DJ like listen to Cipher. People who have beats like listen to Just Blaze. People who you know wanted to listen a, a woman who wanted to be in media love the Angel E episode. But I also think I feel like no matter what you're trying to do, you can always get some great gems from our episodes. Like even if you were trying to be a makeup artist, you can still listen to the Cipher Sounds episode and get some gems about just being on time, being like you know the having no ego, yeah, the allowing no yourself. Ego, you the know, no like, ego thing is was humongous. You know when yeah. he said when he said uh, flex. I uh, said, I want this dude in my, you know, like, you know, it'd it be like that when you meet somebody sometimes. But, you know, at the end of the day, if, if you put that ego down and, and, and you're like, yo, you know what? This is his his slot from right. this time. I'm going to respect it. And I like what he said. I like what, how, how he approached that. You know, I really like how he approached that. Yeah. Even beyond that, like, however, how you treat somebody else's business shows how you're going to treat your own business. Mm, mm. If you don't have no problem empowering and, and uplifting Funk Flex, that shows how you're going to take care of your own business. And even with him, like, elevating the, the, the careers of, like, the Laura Styles and the Drewskis and Juanitos, without him having an ego, sure. he put these people on. Like I'm telling you, Cypher hey, sounds listen, is the truth. It's it's about doing. Okay, here it is. It's about doing dope shit while you you know while you're under the gun while you while people are watching. Right. Uh, you know, I, I I love seeing what people do while the 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 light is shining on them. When you have that light shining on you and you're doing dope things and doing dope things for people, other people. Right. That's when it really that's when the spotlight's on. But even though it is dope what people do behind closed doors that people may not know like meaning like you know many people may not know how you know many people things people do behind closed doors i think that tells a lot put it this way i guess it's weird to say this it's like contradicting myself but when people are watching and when you have the opportunity to to shine that light on other people it's a beautiful thing but i think character is built when People, you know, but when when you know people, you're doing things when no one's watching, right? So, but anyway, internet. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Light up your blunt if you want. If you don't do any and if of you're that, you're drug free. You know, yeah, just put some yeah, lemon yeah, and sure. some mint in your sure. water. Get that going. You know, uh, get the coquito going. Get some eggnog going. Um, get a little water. This might even be a good episode to get some heads. So you know, no, no, no. This one, pay yourself. Get 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 a, get this a might be uh, a good one. Get, get a pen and, and, and a notepad. Internet. We'll be right back. You listen to the Premium P Show with Miss. Listen, nose. Ow. Don't go nowhere. Chit chit. Hey, yo, let's take it back to the 90s and do a drop. This is Cypher Sounds, and I'm chilling 
on the Premium Pete Show with Premium Pete and Mrs. Lissa nose. Like a nose that she smells with. Or the other kind of nose. I apologize. Let's take it back to the 90s. Let's take it to Union Square. Cheer. How? Internet's and we're back. Listen, um, it's always a good time to sit down with friends. Miss Lisa, I told you we need to make this episode happen for a minute. Uh, for many reasons. Not only for sports. I was telling Carl before we went to the break. I was telling um, the internets I was saying. Carl is a dude that is inspiring for entrepreneurial reasons also. Forget about football for a second. A lot of people may know him through football. I mean, just over the years, just seeing, you know, what you've done, not only with Starter, just your own brand. We'll get into that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that I want to do an episode with you because I was like, yo, a lot of people may say Carl Banks and and, and put you in a box to just being a giant, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, but that's, that's kind of a long ways away now. It's yeah. in, so far behind me, yeah. and um, I've been a little more than that. Yeah, you know? because when, when people used to tell me, I'll never forget, years ago, people were like, oh, that's Premium Pete. He's that sneaker guy. Yeah, yeah. And when they used to say that, not that there was something wrong, but no, I was like, yo, I, yeah. I got to work super hard for them to know me in multiple things. Right. right. Because... That's just not me. Like, you know, like it's not just one thing. So anyway, knowing, you know, we sat down before and we've been friends for a minute. Mm -hmm. So just knowing just this story, you know, I think that a lot of people who will listen today that may have not known your story will know that it's inspiring. Um, and we're going to take it. We'll go. First of all, Internet's call banks is in the building. Um, and we're going to go right all the way to the beginning of it. You okay. grew up in Flint, Michigan, right? Flint, Michigan. Yep. And, you know, we'll, we'll even say a lot of prayers out the front, you know. Uh, yeah. They're still handling. They're still dealing yeah. with it, right. yeah. What, what um, have you got involved in um, well, since my, that Well, I still have family there. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been there. I've addressed their city council. I've been there to help, you know, pass out water and things of that nature. But um, I'm I'm kind of in the thick of it. My brother's still there. My younger brother's still there. And... Um, it's unfortunate. It, no, it's less than unfortunate. It's 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 garbage that um, you take a community of people and you make decisions that are not in their best interest. As a public official, as an elected official, uh, you make a conscious decision to um, to harm people. Yeah. Right. Point blank. It's a reckless disregard uh, because, and I say it, um, if it were. Um, Auburn Hills, Michigan, mm. or Southfield, Michigan, that decision would be different. And um, so I, I'm, I'm still very disappointed in the governor and, and, and everybody involved. But, you know, the city was in receivership, so I guess they felt like, you know, we can we can crap on them and it's, you know, nobody's going to notice. You know, it's, it's, it's beyond sad when you really think about what you're saying because, you know, even like I was up in Pennsylvania, I live in Jersey now and uh, for the past couple of years, but mm -hmm. just even learning different parts of Philly and Pennsylvania, yeah. I wind up passing by this part of Pennsylvania that I never knew about, mm -hmm. Villanova, Pennsylvania. There were houses there like fourteen, fifteen million dollars. Yeah, that's uh, Bryn Mawr. Yeah. The Bryn Mawr yes. area, yeah. And let me tell you something. Those roads were smoother than a motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. I went I went back into the city, into Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I hit every fucking pothole you could believe of. Well, I mean, and and we'll get back to me in a minute. But no, this I know, is kind of <laughs> what, what I'm, I'm about to the substance of me. Um, because when we, if we didn't learn anything from this bizarre election, is that people will organize for what they think is their best interest. Now, whether those interests are served. Um, is a whole nother story, but it got a guy elected promising to take back whatever they felt they lost, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we have a uh, urban community. I want to say African American. It's sure. urban, inner city communities that have a lot of power. But then you 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 listen to people post election, and it's like, well, I didn't vote. I didn't think it would matter. Yeah. Or you have. Um, you know, one of the, the world's biggest entertainers and, and, and um, 
you know, self-professed thought leader, and I think he is a very bright guy, Kanye West, who, yeah. you know, say he didn't vote. Yeah. You know, I didn't vote, but if I would have, I would have voted for, for Trump. Trump. Yeah, and that's yeah. his prerogative. Yeah. But, you know, you have, you have um, the attention of so many young kids, black, white, um, whatever. He's global. This dude is global, right? But here in this country... He has a tremendous audience, has a tremendous voice, um, and his power came through voicing, using his voice through music. Other people's power can't exist through his voice if he's not um, voting, number one, or encouraging others to express, because he's the guy who kicked in the door and said, give me my chance, sure, right? right? So how can you say to a community, uplift yourself? If you're not telling them to do exactly what you did, kick in the door, but, you know, metaphorically through your voice, through your vote, through your power, through your ability to organize, you see, because, um, you have, have a, I don't want to say a responsibility, but you got people that love you, people yeah. that, I mean, people cry for this dude, yeah. right? right? Yeah. And, you know, and it's no disrespect because I think he is a thought leader. But, you you know, I think it's it's almost like and I'm not, I'm, you know, I hope he gets better, you know, um, and this is not kicking a man when he's down. I think he's a he's a he's a you know, he's a thought leader. Sure. He, he has a lot of people that love him. So I was disappointed to hear not that he would vote for Trump. He, that's his prerogative. But that he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so the millions and he's got millions of, of fans and followers and those people are like, well, you know, Kanye didn't vote the last election. I'm not either. Yeah, but well, then, they're inspired. They're inspired by right. what he's doing and what he's not doing. Right. So now you look at his life and like a lot of people may, you know, who voted for this president will look at his life sure. and say, well, damn, I didn't change. Right. It didn't change for me. So if you if you want to get out of your situation, you know, as a community, inner cities have got to do what they say they're going to do. And those thought leaders that are um, influential in those communities encourage them. Do you feel the same about Kaepernick? Um, he's voicing his opinion. Yeah, but he didn't. He, he didn't, didn't vote. As he well. didn't vote as well. Right. And but and his, and, and do you, but his position. Is not he's not telling anybody not to vote. He's saying why he did not. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and he is he's a he's a young man, and not everybody agree with him. And I don't know if I disagree with him. Right. Um, but some of his positions are very clear in terms of hey, listen, there's no justice in the inner cities. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of police brutality and things of that nature. And that's his life. That's what he you know. That's what he's experiencing, and and, and what he's talking about. Um, he said it's not about the flag. I, I don't think I would not stand for the national anthem. Um, but this is his way of expressing his displeasure with what's going on in our society and some of the injustices. And, um, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, don't, don't you think that? I think a, a lot of people take it, um, super personal when they start thinking about their veterans. Like, how sure. could he not, you know, and I understand all that. But, you know, you learn things as things go on. Even to I, even me, I learned that when they sing that national anthem, and you think about, you know, uh, uh, I think Sterling Shop may have said this, uh, where I heard Shannon. it. Shannon. Shannon Shop. Mm -hmm. You know, that um, that that song, you know, that wasn't, like, the guy who was a slave owner. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Right. Right? So when he says land of the free, he, he wasn't talking about, Black people, would you say? He wasn't exactly. free yet. <laughs> we weren't free. No, so, 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 so <laughs> what I'm saying is all these, all these, cause, cause I'm Italian, but I'm white, right? But right. I, even though I grew up different, but mm -hmm. I want to think on the other side for a second. These people, particularly even maybe white people, or, you know, say, mm -hmm. what the hell's the matter with this kid? Right, but there's a, a, there, no one wants to hear what he has to say. They look at the symbolism of what he's doing. And say it's a slap in the face to veterans who are fighting for the country, the, the country and people's right to express themselves. And I think a lot of veterans said that. Um, like I said, I, I don't think I would be one to kneel during mm -hmm. the national anthem, but I, I express my displeasure with things that go on 
in our communities and, and the injustice is a little different. But the kid expressed himself. Uh, I think he was very articulate in his position, but it didn't matter um, because at that point, everyone had formed a narrative as to why he was doing what he was doing and not really paying attention to the issues that he was trying to address. Now, um, they may feel like he should have addressed it a little differently. So be it. But you, know? you would have never got the point across, like if you would have yeah, exactly. And, and and you know, we'll, we'll, we will get back to uh, you know you, but you have been bringing light to this for years. Mm-hmm. I remember you did something in the Sports Illustrated years ago, right, mm-hmm. for uh, Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. when they claimed that he wasn't black enough, right? And you named it was it Blackward Thinking? Yeah, Blackward Thinking. T- t- tell the internet about that. Who may not know about? Well, that I mean, story. because he had you know um, teammates, and there there was this kind of narrative that he wasn't. It wasn't black enough because he either didn't act black, didn't date black or whatever it was. But it was this whole narrative that was just kind of uh, discrediting him in his African-American heritage. And I just thought it was the worst thing you can do um, when we don't respect each other's differences, you know, um, and because he's highly educated, because he's articulate and because he's damn good. That's not a reason to be uh, jealous enough to say he's not black enough. What's black enough? You know, wouldn't we want um, our young African-American, I call them leaders, to be that? We want them to be smart. We want them to be examples and articulate. So um, I was very disappointed um, when I when I got to to start reading this stuff about it and I was just compelled um to write, you know, because I just thought it was just it was just backwards. It's a backwards mentality and uh we gotta get out of that. That grew some legs that article, no? Yeah, it did. You know, and I've I seen it, it moved around and a lot of people were talking about it. Yeah. And, and you know, I just think is is great that you always <laughs> You know, you are in the corporate world when you really mm-hmm. think about it, you know, with your businesses that we'll get into, mm-hmm. radio, giant organization, but you never bite your tongue when you want to say what what is right and what you're feeling. And, you know, not a lot of people do that. Well, you, I listen, you know what? If, if it's something that needs to be said, you say it, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I'm very respectful of people and, and their opinions, but um, I I will bring attention to things that I, I think are, are wrong and, and it's how I feel about things. So I'll express how I feel. Um, and, you know, I understand my responsibility. I have children, yeah. you know what I mean? So um, I have to be an example for them as well. And I need to let them know what goes on in society and share my experiences. I actually just had a, um, a really interesting interaction with police uptown. Really? Um, was it last Friday? Um, leaving the city and I got pulled over and, you know, so I, um, I drive a, you know, I drive a Kia. I do, I'm a spokesperson for Kia. So yeah. I had a different type of license plate, but I, they pulled me over and, um, they asked for my information. I gave it to him and then he asked me about the license plate. It was two police, New York City police officers and, um, I didn't quite know how to answer. So I said, I do work with the company. And then he asked me again. And I'm like, I do work with the company. Now, every time he asked me, he was more polite than the first time. Really? I was the one getting frustrated, right? <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, officer, forgive me, but I'm not sure how I should be answering this, but I'm just telling you what it is, right? So he says, I'll be back. He went back to the car and his partner and came back. He says, let me tell you why I pulled you over. And um, he says, well, you're, you're, you're driving with a manufacturer's plate, and it's nighttime. And normally those plates, at least in New York, it's a state it's a state law that, you know, that's transporting a car. And if we see something like this at night, we think it's a possibility of, um, you know, somebody selling a car or just stole a plate. Sure. So we have to check it. And... I, he said to me, he says, I, you know, he kind of figured out that it was legit. I, he ran the place and probably knew who I was at by the time he got back to the car. And he says, I apologize for the inconvenience. And I was like, yo, that's pretty cool. 
right? So, and I wasn't, and, and, you know, we hear so much about with police officers, the bad ones, right? But these are dudes that just basically doing their job, right? But I just wanted to share the experience with was people. Was this a white officer? Yeah, it was okay. two white officers. We had, we had Uptown. We had Pacifics. You know, but it was, it was, um, it was a cool experience. An interesting encounter is what I called it because we hear so many things about bad police officers, but then these guys are just legitimately doing right. their jobs the way they do them. And he gave me a real explanation, you yeah. know, and this was not in, you know, rural USA or, you know, um, it was uptown, you yeah. know, and he just gave me and I appreciated it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's all in the day's work for those guys. That's what they do. And um, the law is on the books, too. Right. Yeah. He did buy the books. You know, I went home. I'm like, let me make sure, you know, I look it up. <laughs> it's all legit. You yeah. know, so I mean, I can appreciate, you know, dude doing his job. And like I say, every time he asked me a question, he was becoming more and more polite. Not sure. the other, other that, way that, That's funny to hear that because yeah. I, I always feel like they just try to um, place fear in you. Yeah. And whenever I get pulled over for anything, even like, you know, I'll get assumptions. Right. I like, mean, like I've got pulled over in my area where I live and they're like, what are you up to? What's going on? Why are you around here? Right. Well, if you check my license, I live a block away. Right. You know, even like, you know, I live in a community. So, we, you know, like we have association type. Right. You know? When you go in there, even the other day, I'm walking to go to back to back of my garage to throw out my uh, garbage. And a cop comes uh, down the street, strolling five, ten miles per hour, just clocking me. Right. Not even like, uh, you know, like a like a wave. Right, right. Nothing. Just like, like I really wanted to be like, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah. But, Are you dressed like, like this, Peter? Did you have on your sweatsuit? I had and your boxes Jordans? and slides or whatever. Did you give a hood? Right. No, like, no, but what I'm saying The same matter. way, like with the cops with you, you have a different, like, je ne sais quoi. You coming through with your suit? I didn't have you a suit on. What you I had just on? came from. I oh, was yeah, the out gym listening clothes? to jazz, to be honest with you. So you I was listen? out for the club, you know? I was. You but, still was dressed up. You didn't have on a nah, sweatsuit and, and your chucks. But um, but not. Nah, but 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 it's it's good that you shared that story with us. And and even like ending on the the Russell Wilson story, I like how you put you called it blackward thinking. You said forget who's black enough. It's time to address the big black elephant in the room and acknowledge what we really mean when we talk about the NFL violence and race. You yeah. know, I like I like the way you even put um, when you in your second year in the league, mm -hmm. right. That when you decided to invest in a company, which was um, was it was that G three Sports mm -hmm. at the time, which is a clothing. Well, I started, yeah, I started my own um, business, you know, um, and I ended up partnering with G three later on, um, a, about a year, eighteen months later. But yeah, I, you know, I knew I wanted to do something um, outside of just. Playing but nobody football. questioned you. You were saying like they, that, you know, right. like when you like nobody made fun of you because or or or, or said that you weren't like a. a Sport, sports guy or football right. guy enough because you're preparing your f for your future. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy to think that. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. I want to take it to, uh, so when you grew up in Flint, right. you grew up with a mom and dad? Yeah, yeah, mother and father. What did um, mom do? Mother was a postal worker, father was a corrections officer. Corrections officer. Yeah, I worked in a cemetery. <laughs> so really? Yeah, I, I worked in a cemetery Doing what? from high school through college, digging graves. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Shit, if I ever need you, I'm going to fucking... Yo, it was the best experience. It was a life experience, man, because um, I was... How old were you? I was... He said well, high school. High school so I was 16, 15 I started. 16 I started there, and I did it all through college. Um, but the interesting part about that was... And I don't know if my father set this up with the owner of the cemetery or not, but... Um, I work with ex-cons and convicts. Oh, nice. So I'm getting wisdom. I'm working aside or alongside of everybody that's coming, you know, in halfway house. Sure. Trying to re, you know, uh, rehabilitate them lives sure. or get readjusted. And it was interesting, man. It was, it was fun. Um, I learned a lot, you know, at a young age and, no spookiness, you know, nothing crazy, people, nothing. No, nah, people dying to get in there, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, not jumping up, so, at so you. that's <laughs> but rabbits and you know maybe a snake or two, but that's about it. I feel like I would feel like the spirits and like yeah. I couldn't do Yo, it. Let but, me tell you the, the craziest thing about it. it the, the most, um, the spookiest moment for me is that a family wanted their loved one dug up because they bought a different plot, right, for more of the family yes, members, yes. right. So this 
this um, body had been buried for like probably 15 years or so, right? So we had to dig it up, <laughs> right? And it's in a what vault. What the fuck? Like the casket goes into a cement vault, right? But, you know, you're if it's in the ground for that long, it's got some smell to it. Yeah, sure, water. sure. So we had to, like, the, the backhoe digs enough, and then we had to get down in there in shovels uh, to get enough room to put chains around the vault sure, and lift everything. It up. And um, so I had to jump down in there on top of that casket, and it's like, it was crazy. Like, you're in, on top of the vault is what it is, and you're digging and so, but anyway, um, hard work is, I'm um, not a stranger to that. Well, you well listen, you would have been a fucking great, uh, soldier for the mob. The grave? <laughs> no, not inside the grave. He was he inside the, well, the it was in the grave. Yeah. 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 But I had dug out. I mean, you know, so. Wait, was it like, you ever watch uh casino or yeah. good fellas? Yeah. He said, I'm not digging another fucking hole. <laughs> I don't mind to dig it. It's going to be the first one. That's right. Now, but you know, um, so mom and dad, um, Two brothers. So you, okay. Two Younger brother. brother, older brother. Okay. Yeah. And you grew up, uh, they stayed together for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. God rest their souls. But yeah, they were together forever. Yeah. Um, I had good, you know, I had good upbringing. Mm. A very disciplined household. But, you know, we were able to live, my brothers and I. So, um, but, you know, we had to learn how to read. We had to understand uh, because this was, I grew up, you know, um, 70s post just post um civil rights right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. literally you know born in the 60s so i'm born through this growing up through civil rights so there are a lot of things that you had to learn about society um yeah. early on yeah so so um, you, you know when did you know that you wanted to play football um so was it a young age was dad into it like? uh, i was the only person in my family um by immediate family that played sports like really? my two brothers about your height. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened with me, but um, I got the, the growth gene. But um, I started playing when I was eight. I was never really all that good. Mm-hmm. And then throughout, you know, um, middle school and high school, I was never the best. I was probably like the third or fourth best player. Playing what? what you on playing all with? my teams, basketball and football. Okay. And um, then I went to college and I wanted, I thought I wanted to play basketball. And, um, my high school coach said, "Now you're a football player," and I, because uh, I had met I had met Magic Johnson at a basketball camp, and it was so much different. You know, he was at such at a different level, and you know, a state all state basketball player myself, and he was like just at a whole nother level. And so you're like, I'm, I'm going to re- redecide what I want to do with this. Yeah, but <clears throat> I went to um, I went to Michigan State as a football player, not as a position. So okay. they say you're either going to be a tight end or you're going to be a linebacker. And I ended up becoming a linebacker. Yeah. So. You also took broadcasting while you were there, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was a serious thing for me. Cause I, um, which is a coincidence you're in broadcasting. Yeah. Well, or not. So you maybe know? that's what you really wanted to do. Well, I did want to write commercials right. and write scripts and stuff. And I, you know, it was part of the whole plan for me. Um, I wanted to make sure I got a degree and made sure I used it when I, when I finished. So, um, that worked out. Take that us to, uh, you're in college, you're in Michigan, right? Michigan State. Michigan State. Mm-hmm. You were first round, first round, third pick overall. Yeah. So, like, how did that even, back then, did they even so, have like a, a place you went, like the garden? Would you go? Yeah. I mean, they, I think it was like the first year or so that they were televising the draft. But mm-hmm. the interesting thing about it, um, my four years at Michigan State, we didn't win a lot of football games. So mm-hmm. every summer... As I'm getting ready for the next year in college, I'm picking up like Streets and Smith and all of these other sports magazines, reading sure. about all the top ranked linebackers. And they're going to, you know, Arizona and Florida and Florida State, Miami, Texas, you name it. So, so who, for Mississippi. Who, who, who was some of these linebackers? Um, you had, well, Wilbur Marshall was a beast. Yep. Um, Jeff Lighting was in Texas. Ricky Hunley was at Arizona. So they didn't um, have your name there? I was nowhere. Like, dude, every year I'm looking to see if I was even honorable mentioned, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but going into my senior year, you know, because I wasn't on the radar. Yeah. You know, we played Ohio State, we played Michigan, and I always balled out against them. But um, on a national scale, those big schools were factors. Sure, sure. 
But I end up winning um, my senior year. I was uh, I won the Buckets Award. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the, the highest honor you can give a, a, a linebacker in college. And, and you and scouts were there. You, you they, I didn't coaches get, dude, were telling. I you? didn't even get invited to the um, Senior Bowl, the Combine. None of that. I had to go. There was all of the great All Star games. It was the Senior Bowl, the Hula Bowl the East West Shrine game, all warm weather. And then they had this other bowl game called the blue gray game. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, it was played on Christmas day and nobody really wanted to go play in it. And I didn't get invited to any of those other games. And, um, my college coach said, why don't you just go play in the blue gray game? And I guarantee you by the time you get home, cause people don't know you, that by the time you get home, you're going to be invited to every other thing. Right. So I went, I got MVP of that game. Right. And, um, so I got invited to the rest of them. Then I went to the <clears throat> NFL combine and all those dudes I was reading about were the real deal. <laughs> like, um, but I felt, you know, I belonged in that group and obviously the scouts did too because I was drafted number three overall yeah. in the NFL. So how does that even happen for somebody? I mean, like you knew a I'm month from Flint, before. Dude. What? I'm from Flint. I didn't know. I, I sat in my coach's office. I didn't get invited to New, New you York. Draft? I was sitting there watching on TV. I didn't know. Get I had no idea here, really? I was going to be, I, I hope to be. So what did you get, a phone NFL? call? Did they I called got, your yeah, coach? Yeah, they called my coach's office. Who, the Giants? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Bill Parcells called and um, said, I drafted you and I didn't draft you to sit you on the bench. Really? That was it. Yeah, I like. I had you no You said, hey, clue. coach. Uh, yeah. Um, like, I'm watching the draft and I did not. I had no clue that I was going to be a first round draft choice, right? I was just hoping to be drafted and, um, he called and it was, it was on from there. And then I didn't know a lot about New York okay. and especially the, the Giants. And then I go look up, you know, who the Giants linebackers are. They got four all pro linebackers <laughs> at that time. And, you know, two guys, two of those guys are in the Hall of Fame now. Yeah. So I was like, damn, I hope coach wasn't lying when he said he didn't draft me to sit me on the bench, but, I had to earn that, man. Yeah, you know, as a New Yorker and a Giants fan and having a father who's been a Giants fan for so many years, you know, um, it's funny because I feel like you definitely always balled out. You definitely earned your stripes as a New York Giant. Right. Helped bring two Super Bowls to New York. But because of Lawrence Taylor, you always were, like, overshadowed on the linebacker position. But I feel like that was a gift to you because because people, like, even teams, because they were focusing right. on him, you came out and, and, and were born. I mean, did that ever bother you at all? No. You okay. know what? The interesting thing about being the other guy on a team with Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson. Mm-hmm. And Harry Carson, right, yeah. That meant you had to be pretty damn good, you know, because those dudes had such high standards. And um, they had lost two teammates to make room for me. Yeah. You know, and all those guys were all pros. So, um I didn't feel any type of way about it. I just felt, you know what? People are going to test me because they don't want to test Lawrence, and I get to show just how good I am. Yeah. And um, I end up becoming, at the end of my career, I made the 1980s All-Decade team. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a linebacker. So that says something. I was on a preliminary ballot this year for the Hall of Fame, yeah. and I didn't make that next cut, but who knows? Man. Hey, listen, maybe... Uh, just to be knows? thought of is still an honor. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? I won two championships. I have zero regrets. Explain explain to the internet who may not know, and I know you really can't explain, but explain how the fuck does it feel to win a Super Bowl? Like, uh, what does that even like? What it's, that it's, um, it is probably, I don't know. I mean, it, it is the ultimate feeling, and you chase it. Yeah. You know, um, I don't, I don't do drugs, but, you know, I know a lot of people who do crack. Yeah. And, or used to. Anyway. I'm about to say still? No, I was going to say anybody that's still doing what? it is crazy. But <laughs> they chase it. You know, it's the yeah, high that they the chase. High, yeah, yeah. But you win a Super Bowl, um, you want to chase that feeling for the rest of your career. Right. You know, and um, I was fortunate enough to win twice. And it's the most incredible feeling. There's nothing... Nothing that compares to it. And at that time when the Giants, so it was, was it 86? 86 and 90. And 90, right? Yeah. 
was like was there like what was playing in the, like were you allowed to play any type of music I, like throughout that uh, run throughout the Super Bowl both of them was yeah, there a certain uh, music you remember blaring through there we had um, Bill didn't want no hip hop in there did he, he? liked hip hop yeah, yeah he liked absolutely it. did um, he didn't care um, but I think during that period in New York it was all Run DMC mm. Run DMC Houdini um, some Curtis Blow mm. Um, cool in the gang, mm. Grandmaster Flash. Um, who else? But we were really cool with. Um, we were really really cool with um, Run DMC. Okay. Like Pepper Johnson and and um, Jam Master J, rest in peace, were like best friends. Mm. So, um, but we were all in the same circles around that time. Yeah. You know, another thing that I, I, I forget that you were even there for. It's fucking amazing when you think about it. One of the best national anthems. Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Yeah. How, how was, did you know, like, did you feel like, first of all, take us through that because you're, you're sitting there on the sideline ready to play the yeah. Super Bowl. Uh, that's got to be a, a, a tingling uh, feeling or, or, or um, how do you say, even a choked up feeling maybe. Yeah, but that was that was during the first Gulf War. Okay. Right? So we really didn't get a chance to um, – we didn't get a chance, and this is 90, 89, 90. We didn't really get a chance to enjoy the week of the Super Bowl like a lot of teams do. They get there a week. A week in advance, two weeks in advance, we got one week and everything we did, we had to move under like covered tents and canopies and security. So it was pretty tight, but you know, the game comes in, we're ready. We're ready to do it for America. We think that this is the thing that's going in. Both teams are the same way that was going to really, um, take the attention away or the stress away from our society that we were going through so it was you know a sense of that and then when Whitney Houston stepped out I I knew her and her her people and it was just incredible I I told everybody she was singing directly to me I'm like y'all look at the film (laughs) like if you look at where she's looking she's looking at me I used to tease people but it was the most incredible rendition of the national anthem yeah I mean, hey, listen, you got to experience that, man. Yeah. Front row center. You know, let's take the people back to uh, in your second year before you said that you started right. your own business. You started, what does that even mean? Like you started a clothing line at the time? Or what What exactly was it? Yeah, so um, my first year was one of the beginnings of Starter mm-hmm. in, out of Connecticut, David Beckerman. And um, I signed up as one of his first spokespeople, right? Mm-hmm. So I got a chance to spend a lot of time in New Haven and, you know, the whole culture of, of uh, sports fashion. And I was like, wow, I want to do this when I grow up. And like a year later, I was like, well, nobody's really doing leather jackets in um, in team sports. So uh, my partner at the time who's passed on, Michael Cohen, said, I know a few sample rooms. Maybe we can uh, build some sign. I, I have a sense of style, but I, have, I wasn't a designer. I wasn't a sketcher, but I had an idea what I wanted to do in terms of team jackets. So I developed my own collection. And I used to do some tailored stuff for myself, teammates or whatever. Um, and so I did develop this line of leather coats for NFL. And they gave me a license for big and tall leather mm-hmm. and um it was good well, so well, big and tall wasn't around like meaning they weren't doing that no nah, nobody was even doing team leather jackets at that yeah. time and so but the nfl wanted me to kind of get my feet wet so they gave me big and tall which seems like normal because big and tall i mean a lot right. of people yeah so it did well and then um the nba Gave me a license for the same While thing. you were still playing football? Yeah, yeah. I was on, I'm in my third year by this time. By the time I, I got my NBA license, I was in my third year. Um, and my business was starting to grow, and I needed a partner. And the NFL called me in and actually said to me, um, we like the fact that you're in business and you're doing well, but we also want to collect royalties. We want to, We want you to do well so you can pay us more. And so I had to um, find a partner, and I partnered with the G3. Mm-hmm. And um, 
the rest is history. So we're paying them a lot of royalty checks right now. Yeah. I mean, now when you look back at it, you brought Starter back to order jackets. Yeah. Which were legendary when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and even even so, you also do women clothing, right? Yeah. So I have, I have um, before, because Starter, under, you know, my leadership or my the license I have is only three years old, three and a half years old. Yeah. So I had G3 Sports by Carl Banks. I had G3 for her. Um, we do a collection in partnership with Alyssa Milano, Touch by yep. Alyssa Milano. So I do men's apparel, men's outerwear, swimwear. Sports, no? Yeah, all sports. All sports, yeah. Yeah, and I do it for all the major sports leagues. So that's grown from just big and tall leather to everything, from T-shirts to hoodies, everything. But how, so, how does somebody, I mean, is it because of your business mine like how do you get these all these licensing like you know i um you develop a core competency man i mean you look for opportunities and when i did great with the outerwear um big and tall then they gave me regular sizes Mm -hmm. and then i could compete um with all the companies that were doing like one jacket i was doing like 40 jackets Mm -hmm. 50 jackets so retailers had an option um, and then I grew as a valued licensee, you know, um, and I look for more opportunities to do things that weren't being done in the marketplace. So, you know, licensing, listen, licensing is a, is an amazing thing. The reason why I say that for us, even like I look at somebody like, uh, the kid Dave who, who brought back you in athletics and what a great of job course. they've done. But you think about it, a lot of these licenses were kind of like just sleeping. Yeah. And, you know, people go out and they look, there's, you know, businesses you look to say, hey, remember this, or maybe we could bring this back, or it's just amazing to find lanes to create or bring back something and start, it makes so much sense. Like, yeah. like it's still, like, for instance, a couple of days ago, we seen LeBron James mm-hmm. wearing a starter jacket on the side of that Ohio State game. Right. Right? It didn't look like it was an old jacket called starter. Yeah. It, it looked like a dope jacket. Yeah. That's one thing. I, I don't think Starter ever lost its... Uh, nah, it didn't. That was a special makeup we did um, for exhibition yeah, yeah. in Ohio. Yeah. And um, they wanted to create this really dope Ohio State collection. Did you know he was going to wear it? Nah. That's now a- that, but see, that's the beauty of it um, because it's it has an appeal that, you know, you're not trying to throw jackets on people in, in, in a corny way, but it's kind of organic. When you see uh, Kendrick Lamar uh, wearing on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine um, a White Sox jacket that he bought from a vintage store, I mean, that's just resonating with a generation. So when that that jacket showed up on Ohio State's sideline, and, yeah, we, we did a dope collection, a collab with Exhibition, and they're out of Ohio, um, but I had no idea that that was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, even when I say you produce product, obviously, but even the licensing is not the product. you got to build up the brand. Yeah. What, what, what I want to say is I want to let the internet know something that I actually researched, which I find amazing. And let me tell you, this day and age, you think about it, right? The, the, these, are, these are things, something to think about in business. Instagram, right? It's the most valuable photo company that sells no cameras. Right. Right? Uber is the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Exactly. Airbnb, the largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. Right. Intellectual property. Hold on. I'm going to keep on going. Netflix, the (laughs) largest growing television network, lays no cables. Exactly. Facebook, the most popular media provider, creates no content. And the last one is Alibaba. Yeah. The most valuable retailer has no inventory. Yeah. Like, so, you know, when you think about business, you think about from an entrepreneurial point, you know, um, the sky's the limit, man, for, 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 for the future, man, of what people could create. And Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's intellectual property and then there's the um, the people that make under those under those brand names. And I think it is, if you have an idea, you can grow. Um, whatever it is you need to uh, to make it happen. Yeah, you know? that's amazing when you think about it. But uh, even even let's go back with, with with Lawrence Taylor and everything he's been through. Mm-hmm. You know, have you ever had a chance to really like talk to him and try to help him as a brother, as a friend, as a teammate? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Man, I think, you know, he's he's definitely our brother and our friend. And I think, you know, the, the period he went through with drugs, we're all happy he's done with that. You know, he's he's drinking. Um, but I think the unfortunate aspects of his early life is now um, anything that happens with him, it gets magnified as, wow, Lawrence Taylor's still a wild guy. But he was um, he was probably... I would say without a doubt, the best teammate we had, like in terms of not being aloof, being part of our group. But the other aspect of it, he kept the wild side out of our locker room. We never had people hanging around. Um, he never brought, you know, you didn't see drug dealers or So you're saying groupies nobody was like, sniffing coke in the locker room? Um, not, not if he brought it. <laughs> no, no. I'm playing. <laughs> if if the, he brought it, it didn't, it didn't happen. No. No groupies but, in but the locker room. There was no, there was no outsiders yeah, I know what you mean. in our yeah. space, yeah. you know, and, um, when he walked in to work, it was all about football. Yeah. So, but, um, we talk a lot, you know, um, well, I want to say a lot, but when we see each other, we talk. He plays a lot of golf now. So you know, I have a uh, I have a funny quick story. I got I got to tell. I think I may have told you this story, but uh, about like uh, three years ago, maybe I was at at this little small dive bar on I think like maybe like Prince Street or something mm-hmm. in the city, and uh, it was uh, I was with Combat, and he told me to come, and it was a couple of like journalists, people I think Pete Oasis, a couple of people, and we're sitting at the bar and we're talking, and all of a sudden Combat yells. That's Lawrence Tower outside. And right. I was like, get the fuck out of here. First of all, he, I, I felt like he didn't know sports like that to right. know, but he was like, that's Lawrence Taylor. So we went up going to the door, and there, there's a Russian bouncer outside, and he's like, you don't have ID, I don't let you in. Right. Yo, Combat was like, yo, that's Lawrence Taylor, man. You're letting him in. <laughs> and I couldn't believe that it was Lawrence Taylor. Let me tell you something. He's wearing a button up and a messenger bag. Yeah. He was, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Probably had all cash in the bag. Yeah. Too. I, I, Knowing I, him, he just came from an appearance or something. Yeah. It, 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 cash. So I'm talking to him and uh, he was like, thanks for the help. And then, I, you know, he, he was like, he was in Florida. He was telling me right. and, and we were like, Hey, we have this podcast. You should do it. And he's like, look, man, I just, I just live in Florida, man. Yeah. And, that's and, all. He plays golf every day. Yeah. Man. And then I was going to say, like, I was like, uh, I think I said, I think I had told you cause I was like, look, I'm cool with Carl Banks. And, uh, he's like, Hey, great guy. I'm just living Florida, man. And I was like, you know what? That's my sign. Yeah. Yeah. To fucking just, that's him. just he leave. Just, he wanted to get inside to whatever he was getting there in there, you know? So. Um, but he's, he's a really good dude, man. Yeah. And, um, just, just a great, he was a great teammate, but like a great brother. You know, he had fun with all of us and it was, um, it was, it was a fun time, you know, to have him as a teammate because he was, um, he held everybody to a high standard when it came to work. And so you knew if you weren't performing, you were going to catch hell from him. Yeah. What about Bill Parcell? Um, I talk to Bill probably once a week, either via really? text or in person. Um, interesting guy. Um, hell of a man, hell of a coach, but interesting because he didn't treat, he treated everybody the same, but not the same. You know, he, he's, he was a pain in the ass to everybody, but he treated, you know, certain players differently than others. But, you know, he was, he was equal in, his um, his demands of his players, and I think when you when you say treated other people, you talk about like just people of color or just no nah, everybody. Him and him and Phil Sims had their battles. Um, he's he's cut me my rookie year. He cut me in the middle of a game because um, <clears throat> we were playing the Rams in in Anaheim, and um, it was just a disaster. And, you know, um, I think the night before the game, there was a mild hur- uh, er- earthquake and we were committing penalties and they were just tearing us up. And uh, somebody had a penalty and he said, like, the next person that gets a penalty, you're getting cut. Right. So I'm running down on a um, kickoff. And I get in a fight on the field. And I get a flag, right? So I walk right off of him. He says, go sit your ass down. <laughs> right? You're cut. And I said, fuck you. Like, really? Like, yeah. And he looked at me. He said, what did you say? 
I said, fuck you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I'm like, shit, I'm, I lost my job, and I'm a rookie. Yeah. And um, he didn't put me back in the game. But um, it, it turns out, you know, that's the type of player he wanted. He wanted fighters. He wanted guys that would um, – that would wouldn't back down, yeah. you know, um, and that, you know, our relationship was never that contentious, but he could say whatever he needed to say to me and I could say it back. And he knew at the end of the day, we were all working for the same purpose and um, he could count on me for for uh, my very best effort. Hey, listen, he uh, he helped uh, lead you guys to two Super Bowls. Yeah, it's an interesting story with him, though, um, because. My rookie year was the year after he had his worst year, Mm -hmm. right? So he didn't know if he was going to keep his job. And I'll never forget, this was probably the only time I've seen him vulnerable other than when he had had to pass a kidney stone before a game, right? Um, He said, he got us up in training camp after one practice, and he said, look, they're going to fire my ass if we don't win. And I'm going to make some decisions uh, personnel-wise that um, I think are going to help us. But what I need to know is that once I make my cuts, the players on this team, I need to know that you're my guys and I'll be there for you. And that was kind of the beginning of the whole Parcells guy Mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm But that was his most vulnerable moment because he was like, ah, they're going to fire my ass if we don't win. So I got to make sure I have the right type of guys and the right players out here. And I think that's what um, that's what sold us on him being, you know, one of the guys and us being part of the same group. What about uh, Tom Coughlin? I mean, uh, he worked hard, uh, you know, built a lot of um – Relationships change his whole style around, became yeah. a player's player mm-hmm. or, or players a coach, player's coach. Um, and, um, I mean, I'm from the outside. I mean, you're involved in the organization. Mm-hmm. It seems to me that, uh, he didn't want to go. They, they, they made him go. None of them want to go. I mean, the money is great. Um, the lifestyle, and if, if you coach, that's what you do. Um, I had Tom as a, um, He wasn't my position coach, but he was a position coach when I played. Um, Very regimented, uh, very attention to detail. And I think it served him well because he became a head coach in Jacksonville, um, then moved on. You know, he was in college, Jacksonville, then New York. And um, he was tough. But, you know, if you need a guy to change your culture, you need that type of coach. Now, Once his players started to get a little older, right, Um, the Strahans, the Jeremy Shockeys of the world, even the Tiki Barbers, they were like, eh, not so much anymore. You know, it's like it's like having a parent that's still parenting you like you were 12. You're now 19, 21. You know what I mean? You can stay out after curfew. And they they had a conversation with him to get him to just kind of like back off. You're driving us the wrong direction. And to his credit, he didn't compromise uh, the principles of winning. He just compromised his approach. And the players responded. They gave him two Super Bowls. Yeah. Um, and then the time came for a change. Obviously, um, he had some bad teams later on in yeah. his career. Yeah. I uh, had a quarterback, but, you know, he had a defense that didn't have a lot of talent. Um yeah, but they never got the offensive line had a lot of issues. Well, they were just recycling guys a lot. Yeah. So, but at the end of the day, they felt it was time for a change. And no coach, you, if you ask any of them, uh, do you want to quit or do you want to go? They're ready for you to go. They're like, no, I can do it. And I've never met a coach or a player for that matter. If they weren't injured, that didn't think they could still contribute something. Yeah. You know what? Let's take a quick break. Uh, we're going to wind up ending up soon. Uh, Winding down the episode. Internets, uh, don't go nowhere. You listen to the Premium Pete Show with Miss Listen Knows. Call Banks is in the building. We'll be right back. Cheer. Internets, you know this episode is brought to you by the good motherfucking folks at Bevel. That's right. Listen, Bevel is cutting edge in what they do. You see them at Target. You hear them all over every podcast. You see them doing their thing. 
GQ named him as one of the best groomers out there. That's right. They shaving this shit down. There ain't no competitors. This is the first and only system clinically proven to prevent shaving bumps and irritation. And for a holiday season, whatever you celebrate, Kwanzaa or Christmas or Hanukkah, the good folks at Bevel gave a chance for y'all to save some money. Head over to getbevel.com forward slash Pete and save yourself some money. Get your significant other or yourself a shaver, a groomer, a trimmer, a lather, a lotion, whatever it is. A hand job. Whatever you want, Bevel is the beginning of it. That's right. Bevel is love. And if you love shaving, you're going to love this right here. Head on over to getbevel.com forward slash Pete. Save yourself some money. Tell Santa I said hi. Now let's get back to the show. Internet, and we're back. Um, Carl, one thing we didn't go over is how did you get a job as a, a the radio guy, the voice of the New York Giants? Like, how did that even happen? Even though a lot of players become broadcasters, yeah. it's become so normal now. How did uh, you get that? Yeah. Um, well, I basically did my audition tape while I was still playing. Okay, so, you did a lot of things while you were playing. I was, you know, Having man, babies, I was thinking out money. The, yeah, I was thinking out the box. So, um, I did this appearance and met this guy. Um, his name was Wayne Vogel. He worked for Coca Cola, right? And um, I had asked him, would he, would did he think Coca Cola would sponsor like the Carl Banks report? So what I would do is give a weekly scouting report which you see everybody doing now, and it was kind of uncommon at that time. So I would <clears throat> tape kind of a, t- a game broadcast, a uh, um, forecast, a uh, scouting report every uh, Friday mm-hmm. before the game. And then I had the Carl Banks report after the game. So when lose, I would be up in the booth. I would shower, go up in the booth, and do like another 30 or 40 minutes post-game show. That's dope. So nobody was doing it. It's like the standard thing now. Um, but nobody was doing that. And I went out and got my own sponsor. And then, you know, um, it was a big thing with Coca-Cola. And then they became kind of a whole sports-oriented thing. Um, so I was on the side of Coca-Cola trucks. And you'd see in every city they started getting more NFL players. But I was – that's how I got into it. So I stayed connected. Um, in broadcast through that. And when I retired, um, I came back to the Giants. I, they gave me the sideline reporter, um, Mm -hmm. gig and I worked that. And then there was an opening in the booth next to the great Bob Papa. And, um, give that guy a Nat Sherman cigar. Yeah, he's a man. Um, and you know, having worked with him forever, you know, cause he was, I was doing my Carl Banks reports with him. Uh, in the, in the bathroom of underneath the stadium. It was just cold and we had to find a room that there was no noise. Yeah. And that was the only room, right? So, um, we would do that, man. And, um, so when the opportunity came to join him on air, I, I thought it was just incredible. But yeah, I, um. And you're in your seventh year, I think? Uh, something like that, yeah. But yeah, it's funny. And it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's funny to see that and hear that. You know, it's like, um. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, there's a story behind a lot of these things, man. Um, but the format, I think, um, I, and I came to a point, not from the broadcast standpoint, but some of the stuff I do on Mondays and Fridays at WFAN. I, you know, I gave some serious thought this off season as to whether I wanted to do it anymore mm-hmm. because, and, and I'm not saying this arrogantly, um, but the people who do that, like yourself, um, the Stephen A. Smith, the, the Skip Baylesses, the, the Sterling Sharps, I mean, Shannon Sharps, Sterling also, you're supposed to be the smartest guy mm-hmm. on the mic, right? But then, and none of those guys I would ever accuse. Now, they have some different narratives, but then you have people who do and say things for cause and effect that know better. Like, give me a guy. If you want a guy who wants to peddle bullshit, give me the guy who didn't play that knows certain things don't go down the way that they uh, put them out there. And I just thought, man, they were getting more and more guys out there. Um on these shows that were supposedly experts that were peddling bullshit, mm-hmm. you know, and I call them the Pied Pipers of propaganda. 
Um, and I don't, I don't have a problem with, you know, a guy like Skip Bayless, uh, who wants to say something that's thought provo- provocative, uh, thought provoking, or even, you know, Stephen A. Smith, because both of those guys were writers. You know what I mean? Those guys, you know, Skip did serious journalism. Yep. Um, Stephen A., serious journalism. Like, and they will say some things that are kind of off the wall every once in a while, but you know they know better and they'll only go so far, right? But then there are other guys who want to be like them who will say the most outrageous, outlandish stuff. And you say, and I said to myself, man, how many more of these people are they going to put out there? And then I'm saying, well, maybe my voice don't mean as much anymore. If you're not the smartest person on the mic, um, because people who are supposed to be smart are spewing bullshit um, that know better, then this is not for me. You know, uh, I'll stay to my broadcast stuff, mm-hmm. but, you know, some of the talk um, stuff, if, you know, give me the guy who never played if you want that. Give yeah. me the sidekick, right? Don't put a guy who should, who spent a lot of time building a career, you know, and, and they come on the air with no integrity. That's crazy. Hey, listen, you got to protect uh, what you believe in. and uh, Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I'm, I'm principled in that regard, but um, I and I gave it a lot of thought, but I'm still on there. So, hey, you listen, know. you know, but I, I tell you, I wish we had more time. This is one of those episodes where I feel like, uh, you know, there's never enough time in them. But um, as we uh, wind down this episode, you try now when you with the Giants, you travel with them. Yes, right? yes. you go on the same plane as uh, yes. them. Yes, so, so that that's amazing too to know that you you basically travel all over. You know, like every year and yeah, you know, and 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 it's helped your business. It's got to be because you know you see different people. You know what I mean? Like your business has become yeah. Of, of, you know. I, I mean, but you know, I, I try to separate those two mm-hmm. um, as much as possible. Because when I'm doing work with the Giants, I'm doing work with the Giants. Yeah. Um, when we went to London, though, we, we had a good time. Yeah, you know, with the, did some business there. Yeah, the starter jacket, the silver yeah. one, yeah. Hey, listen, man, yeah. I'll tell you one thing, man. Um, in the beginning when I opened this up and I said that, you know, um, your story is, is, is inspiring is because here's somebody, you know, um, who found their way into football um, literally, cause yeah. it wasn't a plan. Found your way into football, yeah. um, made you wealthy, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and and then your mind took you to be an entrepreneur and open up doors. And I, I, to me, you know, it's inspiring that you, you, you're signing licensing deals with the NBA, your third year in the league. Yeah. You know, I think uh, for kids growing up, people listening, people that will listen. That's vision. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, because nobody was doing it. I found a niche and. But the key is, <clears throat> you hear a lot of people saying they want to get into something or they want to do something. Do it. Like, but, but don't do it half ass. Like, develop it so that it's something you're proud of. Don't, don't go through life with an attitude because nobody gave you a chance or nobody liked your idea. If no one liked your idea, then refine it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That means it's a bad idea. Just fucking refine it. You know? Um, because that's where, the best stuff comes from, you know, failure. Um, but don't, you know, when we, we see, and I encourage a lot of young kids and like I said, I have sons. So, you know, if you're, if it's not working, fucking fix it, you know, we'll keep working at it. If you believe in your idea, let me shoot it down. Let me shoot some holes in it and see if you come back with something better. Um, and that's what, where you see a lot of guys in entertainment, you know, they, been at it for a while. None of these guys are overnight successes. They've all had some failure until they refined their, their craft and got their opportunity, you know? Yeah. I mean, I literally, I had all the licenses, but Major League Baseball, I literally stalked them at every trade show for like three years until they let me in. <laughs> like, I'm doing well in uh, basketball, NFL, hockey, college. college yeah. I got all these licenses. I'm doing well. You guys won't license me. Why? 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 And I just kept pushing, man. And what the got why? I never told you anything. Well, they had they, no. Well, their licensing matrix was um was full. Mm. But um, air quotes on that. But that was because they were partners with the same people all the other leagues were, 
And they're saying, well, this guy's still in all my business. All my competitors are saying they're still in all my business. And I'm like, give me an opportunity. Don't let them be lazy. You know, um, competition is good for everybody. So um, they finally let me in, and um, I was able to get some things done there too, you know. But that's the other part of it. You know, competition will block you sometimes, and you just got to find a different way in. There's always a way. Mm, mm, gems, gems, dropping them gems. What's next for Carl? Besides Star, or besides the G three, um, besides I'm just growing, man. I think um, from from an apparel standpoint, we're just scratching the surface. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm really excited about everything that I have going on, and we'll see what other opportunities are out there. But um, just growing my business, man. Retail is changing a lot, and um, just trying to. Make sure I'm proactive and opportunistic so I can see these opportunities and grab them and, you know, and then just keep in my own way, um, staying, staying woke, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, um, as you should. Yeah. And, and making sure other people are too and addressing, you know, the issues that I, that I see and, and making sure my young black men at home and they're good examples and I'm a good example for them. You know? yeah. And also staying woke, would you ever be open to kind of like maybe offering like classes or seminars for something for the football players to learn to have something afterwards? Because none of them like. Yeah, um, they make it so, these guys are making so much money. It's hard. But they to don't get, even know what to do to be with broke. it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm so open to that. Um, and you know, I, I don't preach, you know, to these guys what they should or shouldn't do because right. I was 20 something years old at, at one point in my life too. But I read somewhere that you said that you started planning for your retirement. The yeah, team started. So even started, when you were young, right. you still had so that. So I, I encourage guys to do that. Um, and that's important. Right. I think that's, that's really important to start thinking about your future because you're one injury away from beginning your future. Right. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm excited about life. You know, I get up every morning excited that I have an opportunity to do something cool, you know, and, and it's not work. I enjoy what I do. Yeah. That's a good feeling. No, it's, it's, like I said, it's a good feeling. It's inspiring. Like, you know, I, I, I wish we had more time so we could go over some uh, different issues, but, uh, you know. Yeah, I've been all over the place, man. Thanks yeah. for allowing me to do that because yeah. I, I'm I'm very diverse in in um my interest. Yeah. And um but I, I love talking socially about things. Yeah, that, no, that, and I love I, I, us, I, I love I love that you bring light to it, man. Yeah. I love it. And and you know, I appreciate you and you know, um you, he, he's he's always um been there for me, even like uh, when we had the baby shower, you came to the house and uh you know that was the first time what, you were you a starter I, stroller? No, we no. don't make Star Wars strollers, but you got a lot of Star Wars. What you say? That's the first time what? I had. What did you? Well, that was the first time we were in the, um, in the garage. In the garage, and there was Bel Air or whatever, uh, Rick Ross's yeah, thing. Rick. <laughs> that was the first time, like, you're like, we just got this. Let's try this. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We popped that open up that way. That was a, when you were trying mom's uh, eggplant parmesan. Yes. Uh, she was very good. She, she's a good cook. Yes, indeed. But, um, listen, um, Carl, thank you for coming on. I appreciate uh, we, you having me. We got to have you back, um, mainly just to go over some other things that I think uh, you, we touch on a lot, but I think it's important just to touch on not only social topics, but uh, parenting, like you spoke about, yeah, yeah. And, and wanting to be involved in your kids' lives and you know what it's like. I know that you have gone through um, divorce, but not yeah. not only divorce, just being an athlete, how tough that must be too, you know, yeah. not being around. So, you yeah. know, but you've done a great job, I know, in, 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 in making sure that, you know, you're present and, yeah, uh, and there. You have to. Yeah. And, you know, I've got one left in college, mm-hmm. you know, uh, he's doing well and. St. John's? He's transferred to Seton Hall. Oh, okay. And, um, I have, my youngest daughter is now, um, going for her doctorate at, um, Cal Berkeley. No, I'm not, yeah, Cal Davis. Cal okay. Davis. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. listen, our blessings, when you were allowed yeah. to put your blessings on your kids, but, you know, and, and make them enjoy those blessings. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, but they're all good, good kids, man, and, um, blessed with that. And, you know, their mother has been a great mother to them. And, and, um, yeah, I think we're together, um, in our own way, good parents. So, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I love, uh, on this ending note, I love um, people in the, the sport, the game of football, which football is like life. Um, you know, Al Pacino says a uh, game of inches. Yeah. Just like life in any given Sunday. Uh, one of the best speeches to me that I like. Um, but you remind me so much or, or, or of even like uh, Justin Tuck, who is a, a gentle giant. But uh, <laughs> but no bigger bigger yeah, than yeah. football. He is a yeah. he's a real good dude, man. Yeah, he's a great guy. And you know, um, great guy. People look at football players, and it's like you know, your job is to literally think about it. Your job was to s- smash the quarterback. Yeah, but then when that four hours is over with, man, you go home and it's life. You get in your car and you're in traffic like yeah. everybody else. You got to snap back it right yeah. into that motherfucker. Yeah, and if you got uh, kids at home. Uh, or wife at home that's that's a whole nother that's okay football's over with here's what we gotta do yeah you know here's what the rest of the week looks like yeah so hey listen real life real talk but, yeah man um thanks call again thank you <laughs> internet see you next episode cheer ow